Now, I'm all for saving a polar bear, even if it's at a couple of hundred billion dollars a year. But it seems curious to me that nobody in this conversation mentions the fact that every year we shoot somewhere between 300 and 500 polar bears. I don't know about you, but shouldn't we stop shooting 300 polar bears first? before we enact legislation that will cost hundreds of billions of dollars to save one? And this, I think, crucially encapsulates this conversation, that we're just simply not thinking straight. If what we care about are polar bears, why don't we deal with a way that would actually help a lot of polar bears cheaply before we try to help very few polar bears incredibly expensively? And that, of course, is the take home message here. We need to be smarter about climate change. So I would argue the only real way forward is to focus much more on research and development. Right now the problem is that cutting carbon emissions costs a lot, which means a few rich Westerners are going to do this. Take for instance solar panels. Probably cost about 10 times as much as fossil fuels, which means a few rich Westerners, and uh, we'll put them up on their rooftops mainly to show how good people they are. The Germans actually, which is an odd place to put up a lot of solar panels, are the ones putting up the most solar panels in the world. They're going to be spending 180 billion dollars, 120 billion euros on putting up solar panels over the next 30 years, the net impact of which, if everything goes according to plan, will be to postpone global warming at the end of the century by one hour. I'm not really sure that's a great way to spend your money. Right? The problem here is obviously you're never going to get the Chinese and the Indians to do that because they're more busy actually making sure their kids don't die from easily curable infectious diseases. So the point here is to say, why is it we don't focus on making much cheaper alternatives available? I propose spend 0.05% of GDP on research, development, demonstration, and non-carbon emitting energy technologies. The amazing thing is this would be 10 times cheaper than the Kyoto Protocol, yet it would be 10 times more effective because we would stop buying the stuff that actually costs a lot and does nothing good, but only invest in the stuff that will actually help the world in the long run, namely making sure that we make better technologies. If you, if the US, if everybody could make better technologies available, imagine if we could make solar panels cheaper than fossil fuel by, say, mid-century. We would have fixed global warming. People would switch over, not because they were green, not because they were good, but because we had made it cheaper, cheaper for them. And this would not just be true in the Western world, it would also be true for China and India and everywhere else. So the point is, I'm, I don't know if it's going to be solar panels, so I think we should be very, very careful about making sure we invest in a lot of different opportunities. But the main point being, let's invest in making better, smarter choices in the future, rather than making stupid choices now. That's the main message. And the great opportunity, of course, is it's much cheaper and it'll do a lot more good. Actual preliminary studies show that this would actually fix climate change in the medium term. The main point here is then, yes, global warming is real, but it's often vastly exaggerated, which is why we panic, which is why we don't do stuff that actually works. That's why we need to get back to do things that are smart rather than stupid. But I'd like to leave you with one more point before we, I stop here. It is to realize I, I mentioned there's, this is one of the many problems, but it's by no means the most important problem that we can fix in the world. Al Gore talks about global warming as our generational mission. He talks about how do you want to be remembered by your kids and grandkids? And I think that's exactly the right question. How do you want to be remembered by your kids and grandkids? I'm often very, very surprised about the fact that most people, certainly Al Gore, but most good people out in society today want to be remembered by spending $180 billion a year to do virtually no good even 100 years from now. <laughs> I'm not really sure our kids and grandkids are going to say, great going there, granddad. Why on earth did we spend so much money to do so little good? Just to give you a sense of proportion, the UN estimate that for about $75 billion, much less than half that amount, we could fix all major basic problems in the world. We could give clean drinking water, sanitation, basic health care, and education to every single human being on the planet. Now, how would you rather want to be remembered? Doing nothing for twice the amount or fixing everything for less than half? It's not that hard of a question when you put it like that, is it? And that, of course, is the main crucial point that I think we want to engage everybody in. That's the discussion uh, that was also in the Wall Street Journal. That's the discussion that I think you uh, uh, would probably be able to take up with your electorates and say, how do you actually want to deal with these issues? Where do you want 
to do good. This is actually something we're involved in, in something called the Copenhagen Consensus, as uh, Harold also briefly mentioned. The idea that we bring together some of the world's top economists to look at where can you get the most bang for your buck. They turned out, this was the top list from just a couple months ago. Micronutrients, half the world's population lack vitamin A or zinc or iodine or, 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 or iron. And it really delim uh, 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 debilitates them. Yet, doing something about it would be very, very cheap. We could help half the world's population lead better lives but for about $300 million a year. It really isn't very much money. It's not very sexy, which is why nobody really does it, but it would do incredible amounts of good. Likewise, make sure we do free trade. Let's do Doha much, much rather than worrying about global warming. Let's make sure we deal with immunization and let's make sure that we have agricultural research and development which will actually mean that future generations will be better fed, that we'll be able to grow more crops on less land and therefore also have more nature left over to our future generations. These are some of the places where for every dollar we spend we'll do 10, 20, 30, even 40 dollars worth of good for our money. We should definitely do that. They also said, actually, uh, on the 14th place, energy research and development, just like I just mentioned. Yes, it's not the best thing, but for every dollar you spend, you probably end up doing about $11 worth of good. That's great. That's how we should deal with climate change. They also put at the very bottom, cut carbon emissions. That's the worst way we can do it. Unfortunately, that's the way that most people seem to have focused on doing it today. For every dollar you spend, yes, you do some good, but just not very much about 90 cents worth of good. And spending a dollar to do 90 cents is not a very good way to deal with the world. We're actually, and I just want to mention this, we're actually doing this uh, 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 sometime next year with Utah, where we're going through with their uh, environmental problems and saying, where could you spend money to do a lot of good? And presumably, this would also be a result that would be interesting for many other states and possibly even starting to think about having this kind of process. We have a, a, a process with, uh, with college graduates where we call, call it Bill Gates for a day. What would you do if you were Bill Gates? for a day, how would you do good for the world? And it, obviously when people suddenly start realizing they have real money but they can only spend it once, they become very, very sensible and they end up doing something along the lines of what Bill Gates actually do. So the main point here is really we got to realize that there are many other things out there, so we got to get this right. Yes, we have to have a generational mission, but we have to focus on doing the best solutions. Let's make sure we do Bangladesh rich much rather than cut sea level rises first. And let's also make sure that we deal with all the top solutions from the Copenhagen consensus, that we actually do an enormous amount of good instead of just a little good. I would also like us to start thinking about there are going to be benefits and costs for all these things. And so we kind of ask ourselves, are we really doing the smartest thing? Why don't we shop shooting polar bears instead of having a conversation about trying to save one for hundreds of billions of dollars? And then the last thing is, yes, global warming is real. So we need to fix this in the long term, but we really do have to fix it smartly rather than stupidly. And so, yes, stop shooting polar bears, but also invest in research and development and energy so that we get much better technologies for our kids and grandkids, but also so that we don't bleed them to death and don't actually have any good solutions toward the end of the century. So at the end of the day, this really is a conversation about let's make sure we don't just do stuff that's fashionable, but stuff that actually is rational. Thank you.